Hello YouTube, this is PZZSC in here. Um, I'm actually recording this video um, with my iPod Touch 4th uh, generation. I'm using a front-facing camera. And if you're watching this video um, you know, without interest, you're just watching it, um, you're probably re redirected to it from my iPod Touch 4th generation walkthrough. Um, something I do want to point out for you guys, if you are watching it from that video, for some reason in these particular lighting conditions, I look orange when I use this camera. When I use the back camera, I look fine. But in these lighting conditions with the front facing camera, I'm orange. I don't know why, it's just the way it is. Anyway, um, so I was watch this video was also completely not planned. I just, I was watching one of Cutlery Lover's videos. If you don't know who he is, check him out at youtube.com forward slash Cutlery Lover. If you are into, oh, knives, all that stuff, gear and camping equipment and all that such, you know, just little, you know, self-defense type things. You should definitely check him out. He's pretty cool. Um, I am slightly into Cutler, I have to admit. So, um, I was watching one of his lanyard videos and um, made me think of something that I actually figured out how to do that I thought I would share with you guys. And this is a um, pretty good tip, trick, whatever you want to call it for you people who are photographers and to use little point and shoot cameras. Now, um, granted, if you know you are a photographer, you probably have a DSLR, but if you still use a point and shoot, I do use a point and shoot. I love point and shoots. I know it's not the best quality, but I do like a point and shoot. I like the small form factor and all that stuff. Anyway, wow, I get sidetracked easily. Yeah, um, one of the things that, um, d uh, point and shoot cameras come with are lanyards. I love my lanyards. If a device that I buy comes with a lanyard, I'm going to use it with that device. For instance, my camera came with a lanyard, I use it. Now, my DSi, right here, it has a spot for a lanyard, but it didn't come with one. So therefore, I don't have a lanyard on it. On the contrary, though, my DS original also has a spot for a lanyard, and it came with a lanyard, so therefore, I use a lanyard with it. Um, this is a pretty bad lanyard, though. I really don't like it. But, yes, um, just saying, I use lanyard, lanyards. One of the biggest problems I find with lanyards is that if I go to put it in, say, my case here, it's just a little case from Samsonite. Uh, I think, it, I don't even know how much I paid for it, but um, I got it from Walmart when I bought my Nikon camera a while back. Is that when you go to pack a cam your camera in it, you know, sometimes that lanyard can be a bit of a problem. And then you got to kind of shove it in and... You know, just hope that the zipper doesn't get in the way when you go to zip it up. If I can find the zipper, which is right there. So yeah, um, that's my biggest problem with lanyards. Um, some people, I've seen, take the lanyard, wrap it around, and stick it in there like that. You can do it like that, but you might still run into some issues. Some people just don't use the lanyard, which, frankly, I'm not too sure why, because lanyards are pretty important when it comes to cameras, because... They keep you from dropping it the way I mean if I if I hold my camera like this I don't feel you know like I've really got a good grip on it but if I just simply put the lanyard around my wrist I f it feels much more secure in my hand because you know if I drop it it's not going anywhere you see I still got it and I can you know just bring it back and all that stuff whereas if I had dropped it without the lanyard it would have hit the ground and probably broken if it hit something hard so anyway yes. So that's why I like to use lanyards, and again, they can become a bit of a hassle when it comes to putting it in your pocket, putting it in a little case, because they could hang out, all that stuff. <clears throat> so I actually devised a sort of trick that I use whenever I pack my camera in my case, and what it basically allows for me to do is this right here. Wrap my lanyard around my camera, as you can see right there. And the way this is done, it is incredibly easy to do. Um, what you do, uh, is you start by holding your lanyard like this. You see how I'm holding it? My hands kind of, you know, just hold it like this. And then, what you're going to want to do, come down and grab this little plastic piece right here, or just grab a part lower, a lower portion of the lanyard. Grab right there. And then, make sure that you let it fall onto the camera. Alright, make sure you let the lanyard actually fall off of your hand and onto the camera. So that way it wraps around this piece here. Because when you pull your hand back, what you're going to end up with is a sort of loop, as you guys can see right there. 
and then you're just going to make sure that this portion of the lanyard goes below the plastic piece. Um, so that way you can actually do this. So let me show that to you again in case you weren't able to follow. Again, you're going to hold the lanyard like this, alright? You're going to come down, you're going to grab the plastic, and you're just going to let the lanyard slip off of your hand, and then you're just going to pull out like this so that way you have a nice little loop, alright? So you're going to do that, uh, messed up, so you're going to do that just like so, ah, there you go, and then what you're going to do, you're just going to simply take your camera, and you're just going to wrap this loop around your camera. It is as simple as that, and just let go, and you are set. Alright, as you can see, your camera is, well, your lanyard isn't going anywhere. I mean, it could if you shook it just a little bit, but, you know, <clears throat> I mean, chances are after you do this, um, without even thinking about it, it's going straight into your bag. Okay, that is the first time that's happened, I promise. <laughs> that is the first time that's happened. I don't know why it just happened then. But yes, you just wrap it around the camera. And again, without even thinking, first place it's probably going to go into is your bag. And then, you can zip it up, worry-free. And as you can see, it's nice on there. Let me actually put it in the other way so you guys can see how nice and snug it is. I don't know why I came and done that time. It normally doesn't do that. There it is right there. And you can close it up, zip it up, all that jazz, and away you go. You um, don't need to worry about that getting tangled with some other cords you might have in your camera. If you have a bigger bag full of like cables and stuff, you don't need to worry about it getting tangled. You don't need to worry about it, you know, fraying or anything. When you're ready to use it, just pull it out. And it's so easy to undo. You just literally flick it down. Oh, caught my thumb. And there you go. Um, wow, this is like a completely mishapping video, because, uh, yeah. So, again, just quick motion. You might not even think anything about it when you get into a habit of doing it, and then you just put it away, and then when you're ready to use it, off you go. Very quickly and easily to undo, and you are ready to start filming. Now, I should point out, if you have a camera with a protruding lens like this, you want to be very careful that you have the lanyard undone before doing this because when you have it you know wrapped around your camera you go to turn it on what's gonna happen is this it's gonna get stuck and you're gonna get a lens error and you can probably make it out right there it says the lens is jammed so that is going to be a bit of a problem so you always want to make sure you have it undone I don't think it's a problem if you do it on accident occasionally um, it's probably not going to hurt your lens, but I mean, if you do it every time, that's going to be a bit of a problem. You could seriously damage your camera. As you can see, my camera still works just fine. I can totally use it to take a picture if I wanted to. So, that's my little tip for you guys. I just took a picture, but the ca thing didn't fire. Yes, yeah, so that's my little tip for you guys. So, thanks for watching, and if this video helped you, go on, do it. Do it. What the heck? Yay! Haha, <laughs> that's an awful picture. Yeah, um, if this video helps you, please like it. And um, that's it. So thanks for watching. I will see you in my next video. Um, adios. I apologize this video isn't very good. It's actually my second take because my first take, and I'm going to let you guys know who are watching my walkthrough know this, or my review know this, there's a fingerprint right on the camera. And if you have a fingerprint on the camera, which is probably going to happen to you, you're going to get a bit of this effect. It's going to get all hazy. You see right there? And I thought that was a bit of a distraction um, when I was doing that video, when I was watching it before I uploaded it. I thought it was a bit of a distraction. So that's why I'm doing another take after wiping the camera down. So that is a bit of a problem. Um, it's not too bad here, but I mean, it was really pretty hazy. There you guys go. It was pretty bad um, when I was doing the first take. So that's it, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. And again, comment, rate, subscribe, or comment, thumbs up, thumbs down, whatever you want to do, subscribe. Adios.